Hi, and welcome to my study on a form of digital art. I'm Emily, and this week I wanted to look at the murals in Providence, most of which seem to be commissioned by the state. When looking at digital art, I wanted to find something that I see every day in person, but something that also has a huge presence in the digital world. Although murals may not seem like a form of digital art, the internet has turned them into one. Now it's normal for someone to post a mural they see on social media or the internet. By doing this, the mural gains traction in the digital world. Living in Providence, I've seen more murals than I did within the past few years living in Connecticut. What is so great about murals in Providence is that they speak for something. I'm going to get into many examples in a minute, but first, we do need to stop and think about where these murals came from. In Providence, these are not graffiti. They are artists who are hired to either tell a story or teach a lesson for all to see. Let's not forget either about one of our favorite artists that did this, Jenny Holzer. The difference was that Holzer's art was projected, not permanent. This way, Holzer really had complete artistic creativity because she was not putting something down permanently and she could project it anywhere she wanted. Holzer's work, like this piece, makes the viewer think. This is one of the strongest characteristics of a successful art piece. This is also a strong characteristic of the murals in Providence. Looking at things from a digital standpoint, these murals are completely accessible online. I did not even need to leave my home to see most of them, but in many of them I did recognize them from walking around the city. This is because they left some type of an impact on me. So let's start by looking at Augustin Patino, who painted what he calls La Plaza de la Arta y las Calturas at 863 Broad Street in 2009. It is right next to the City Arts for Youth in Providence, which also has a huge impact. Showing these youths a successful and powerful piece of art no doubt has an effect on them. He wanted to create a mural that showed hope and opportunity in an area that this was abnormal for. Murals can bring hope to a community that's struggling and Patino showed this with his murals. Furthermore, this piece being posted online means that people anywhere can see it, not just those in Providence, and it spreads awareness and an appreciation for artistry that may have previously just been considered graffiti. Another piece by Bettino that is worth looking at that he painted almost a year later on Plumpty Street is this piece titled Dialysis of the Planet, and it's very visually busy. There's a lot to look at. Sometimes really busy murals are particularly interesting because people tend to crowd around them to really study them. Just like his other mural the year before, this one also has a powerful message. Commissioned by the Dialysis Center in Providence, it was meant to show global environmental concerns. One of the most famous murals that anyone living in Providence would recognize is this one by Mary Beth Meehan. From her collection titled Seen and Unseen, that was in the Providence International Film Festival. This is one of my favorite murals because it shows something that's often looked at as a private moment that shouldn't be shown in public. Because I work in a maternity ward, I'm very used to being around women who are breastfeeding. But most people are not. I have seen on numerous occasions people stopping to look at this mural. I think that because it's so aesthetically simple and clean looking, this is a big reason that people stop and feel comfortable looking. Another very famous mural in Providence, which makes people often stop because of the simplicity of it, is one that's fairly new, painted in 2017 by Andrew Hem, titled Misty Blue. What is interesting about this piece is that many people do not really know what it means, so they go online to research it. This is where the benefits of the digital world come in. Upon further research, I learned that Hem is a Cambodian refugee with a wide range of art education and a style that tends to be haunting. Although we cannot see the girl's eyes in the mural, it does feel as if she is sadly looking at us. It feels almost like one is looking into a small dream world within the city, and this is what I love about this mural. I like that sometimes a piece can be mysterious, like the one that we just looked at by him, but then many times a piece can also be very straightforward with a strong message. I like the murals with strong messages because they are the ones that really seem to be screaming for a change. Also, the powerful murals often seem to be the ones that gain a strong viewership in the digital world. A great example of this is Angel Garcia's Come Together to Stop the Violence, painted in 2004 on Colfax Street. Although some may confuse this piece with illegal graffiti, it was actually commissioned by a handful of local businesses. Clearly, this piece is trying to put a stop to violence. Within the piece, the text is just as powerful as the painting where it says, 
Bullets spray from walls like tears pour from eyes that have seen too much. We are ghetto prisoners trying to escape from a world that is self-destructing through violence and hate. Tired of seeing our blood stain the concrete, so the message we paint. Backs against the wall, we must stand up before it's too late. We have been taught to kill each other, learned a wicked mind state. But we can change, you can change. Aesthetically speaking, the bright colors catch your eye. If I saw this piece on the street, I would definitely go online to learn more about the artist. Another great thing about murals is that they can show history. Let's look at Shepard Fairey's latest work titled Providence Industrial, painted on the corner of Washington and Westminster. If one were to do more research, they would learn that the painting was created to raise money for AS220, a local arts establishment. Not only did it do its job from a fundraising standpoint, but visually the piece also says a lot. The bright red makes it stand out and makes it feel as if it's important, which the large buildings in the word industrial remind residents of how much the city has grown. Due to Fairy's famous works, this piece is extremely popular in the digital world. If you haven't heard of Fairy before, definitely look him up. For artists like Fairy, who are already well established, when they paint a new mural, it instantly becomes a big hit digitally. If an artist has followers, their followers will be constantly looking online to see if the artist has painted any new works. Since they often cannot travel to Providence to see it, they look online. Another famous artist that this also applies to is B-E-Z-T, a Polish muralist. He came to Providence because of a project titled The Avenue Concept. This mural is my number one favorite mural in Providence because of the simple story it tells. The man shown is waiting with a ring but looks disappointed, likely because whoever he was waiting for, whether it was a man or a woman, never came. That is why this piece is titled She Never Came. Again, I think the simplicity of this piece is what makes it so aesthetically pleasing. The simplicity loops us right back around to Holzer, where simplicity really is what made her work so strong. As the internet continues to grow, the presence of murals will too. Just because something was originally not a form of digital art does not mean that it cannot become one. Because many of these murals have been posted in the digital world, this is part of why they are so powerful and well-known. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.